the paddle. Uh, the paddle is a really important piece of tool on a canoe trip. A lot of people think of the, the canoe and that's great, it's fantastic, but they don't think too much about the paddle. You think about it, the paddle gets you around. In fact, I have more connection, I think, with my paddles through my life than actually my canoes. So, uh, and I got a lot of paddles. <laughs> so it's really important to think about getting a good paddle that fits you perfect and it's good for the job that you're going to use it for on that trip. All right, which comes to blades, first of all, before we get into the size. Um, you will probably see a lot of these paddles on sale at outdoor shows and bins. They're like wide things like this. Well, actually, <laughs> something like that. Okay. A wide blade is really good if you want to push a lot of surface water really quickly. So if you're going down a whitewater rapid and you need to go left really quickly or right really quickly, yeah, you push the water and it's really effective for that. If you're going to go across a long lake uh, doing the J stroke all day, the Canadian stroke all day, that's a piece of crap, okay? <laughs> piece of crap. It's, oh, the neighbors are sure, oh, kids are playing. Oh, and they're getting mad at each other. Kids are kids. I think they need a canoe trip. So yeah, so th this is uh, basically for going down white water and need to move the water really quickly. Uh, other than that, don't ever think of going on a long canoe trip across big lakes with this. You will hurt so much. The reason why is that you're pushing the surface water on the surface. If you have a blade like this, which is what's called the beaver tail, because uh, it looks like a beaver's tail, uh, it's it actually is doing the same thing, but under the surface. So when I'm actually paddling, it's pushing all, all this water, but under the surface. So therefore it's more free flowing and it doesn't look as effective. And yeah, if I'm in white water, I don't want to use this. I want to do it really quickly. But during the day, if you want to push the same amount of water to propel you forward, then actually you need a long blade in the water as opposed to on the surface of the water. Does it make sense? Even to the point that you can go crazy with this. <laughs> Boy, I need to oil these paddles for this year. This is an extended otter tail. Really old blade, holy jumping, I gotta oil this thing, so sorry. And I got this for doing my solo trips uh, when I actually going in small creeks, when I use it as a pole as well. So I really like that. Yeah, it's a little long for me, but on some trips, I like this. But yeah, this is pushing a whole bunch of water under the surface as opposed to on the surface. Which is better? That's crap, this is good. My preferred beaver tail, a little bit longer. Also, what do we got here? Oh. The other things I do is I love putting uh, um, leather around the throat of the, of the blade. Why is that when you're paddling and you're doing the Canadian stroke, you're going to run your gunnel along, run your gunnel, you're going to run your throat along the gunnel to actually help ease your, your wrist after a long day. There's old books. Uh oh, it's going to be a fight. <laughs> There's old books that actually uh, show that you should never have your throat touch the gunwale of the canoe. That's wrong. They've never gone on a long canoe trip before. If you're going for 10 days, going hundreds of kilometers, you're going to want to ru run your, your throat along the gunwale when you're doing the, the Canadian stroke or the J-stroke. So leather really helps for that. Love this. It's called the Voyager handle or your, it's a Voyager grip, I think. But yeah, you're supposed to hold the paddle like this. But on a long day, to help this wrist out, you can use this as well. Not all paddles would come with that, but that's an added bonus. You can also have a top grip like this. It's bent a little bit. You know what? I think it's like this. I don't really use this paddle much, um, but that's the idea behind that. And that actually saves your, your wrist as well. So yeah, two different ones. Oh, oh, my neighbors are leaving. A lot of action here. It's a long weekend. I don't go camping on a long weekend. It's just crazy out here. So, actually that's not true, I'm going tomorrow, but, all right. <laughs> You're looking pretty good there, buddy. Okay, what was I saying? Okay, so how do you measure uh, a blade for you, for your size? A lot of the old books and even some of the new books uh, are showing the old way. Uh, it's not that effective. It is for a blade like this, but basically what they show you is to stand, put the blade on your toe or by your toe, and then the top should actually be at your nose level. So therefore the, the blade fits you. That works for a blade like this. 
it does not work at all for any of these other blades, especially a beaver tail or an extended otter tail. Absolutely not. You see, this does not work. If I did this <laughs> in the store, this would indicate that this paddle is way too small for me. It's not, it's perfect for me. Okay, so this does not work with this type of bl blade. Doesn't work. Use the other method. What you want to measure is you actually want to measure from the throat to the, to the top. Okay, not this part. This part's in the water. It's this part, this part. Now, in perfect scenario, you would actually go and measure it while you're out in the canoe. Um, and it, when blades in the water, this actually outside the water comes about this level. You're not going to do that. You're going you're gonna to buy it at a store. There's not going to be a, a water around you. If there's a canoe available, put the canoe on the ground and simply just do that. And that should do it. Okay. But far more effective way, put your hand here, put your hand here. Arms are parallel and it uh, right up and down, right up and down. That means this whole paddle is a perfect size for you, which is actually perfect size for me. Okay. That's too short. My arms are in. Now, why would I have a blade like this? Well, if I'm soloing, okay. So if I'm soloing, I'm going to be down on the bottom of the boat with the keel, uh, with the side over to make it more, more like a keel to get through the water, more stability down here. Most of the time, sometimes I'll be sitting up in the front seat, but a lot of times I'll be down here. So you're closer to the water. So you actually want a smaller size of the throat to the, to the ha handle. I'll actually have two of these, use this most of the time sitting up. And then when I have to go down here, I'll use that for shorter. Or look at this one, look at the size of that blade. This is a, an otter tail, okay? See, it's too small for me, right? But it's not when I'm actually solo. Okay, so that's a really good solo blade. Does that make sense? Remember, the paddle is really important. Choosing your paddle is really crucial. What is it? How many canoe strokes do you do in one day? Imagine doing that in 20 days. That's like by the thousands, thousands of paddle strokes. Make sure it fits. Awesome. <laughs>